again, you would think that also we've known how to do this now. Um, okay, we all know we're being live streamed. Um, all right, so again, thank you for joining us um, to our alums. Ashley Moore just gave us a short introduction. Ashley, do you wanna do a small recap of that for our friends who might be rewatching or catching this live on Facebook? And then we'll go Gina, Sierra, and Maya. Sounds great. I'm Ashley Moore. I'm a 2005 graduate and I had a double major in communication and media studies and political science. Um, since I, I'm currently development director at the Child Development Center of the Bluegrass in Lexington, which is a nonprofit. And um, but in the meantime, since I've graduated, which doesn't seem like that long ago, but it's been um, several years ago, I've lived in South Carolina and Florida, um, just moved back to Kentucky last year and I've worked in for profit sector um, and then also in nonprofit and higher education. And so I've gotten um, a lot of different experiences. And I mentioned before, I also worked in career services actually um, for a while at UK. So have a special appreciation um, for what Faith's doing and then for you all taking the time to, to learn. I'm a big advocate for uh, utilizing career services. So thanks for having me. Great. We're glad you're here. Ashley and I actually crossed paths when I left Georgetown first, when I worked at Georgetown first, went to UK. Um, I worked in the Gatton College of Business where Ashley served in the uh, program office of career management. So it's fun to reconnect um, and we'll talk a lot more about re uh, networking. Um, so, um, and then I'm going to pass it on to someone else I worked with um, at my uh, first tenure at Georgetown, Gina. Yep. Um, so my name is Gina Puddall. I also graduated in 2005, uh, double majored in English and communication and media studies. Uh, when I left uh, Georgetown, you know, I didn't really know that I was going to fall into marketing for the architecture, engineering, and construction industry, which is where I am now. Um, I'm currently part of the infrastructure marketing team for Pond & Company, which is an architecture, landscape architecture, civil engineering, all of the things firm based in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm also working with Captain, which is a um, like event management registration software company kind of on the side, um, which is a company that was founded by a Transylvania grad. So that's been pretty cool. And I think that answers it. I'd take myself off mute. Uh, I'm Sierra Stroner. I graduated from Georgetown in 2008. I studied commerce, language, and culture, and German. So I did do that as a double major. Um, and I am currently working in lean process improvement consulting. Um, but that was kind of a recent change. Prior to that, I was working, actually I had a whole plethora of different jobs. Um, I did IT for a very short time. I don't know much about it. Um, and then I moved into brand marketing within consumer packaged goods. And I was there for about seven years did another year in category management for aging companies, switched to consulting. Awesome. Maya? Hi, everyone. I'm Maya Macklin. Um, I am a 2014 graduate from Georgetown College. Um, I currently work for Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical Company as the district sales manager for Louisville, um, which don't get it confused. I go all the way up to St. Louis. So it seems like it would be a really small territory. Um, but I have five, four states um, that I cover with my um, sales representatives. Um, I majored in business administration with an emphasis in management at Georgetown. Um, Georgetown, I, I will say, is the reason why I'm still in Kentucky, the reason why I'm at Lilly where I met my soon to be husband. Um, so I owe a lot to Georgetown. Um, I started off um, in an internship, uh, my sales career as an intern um, with big ass fans down the street in Lexington. Um, I did a sales internship there, which transitioned into me getting into Cardinal Health, doing an account sales representative job and then transitioning me into Lilly. I've done a few um, different stints here at Lilly as being a sales rep. Um, I was in marketing and strategy and operations and now I am sitting silently as a district sales manager and plan to be here for a little bit. So excited to see you all and be amongst all of my wonderful Georgetown alumni on the panel. Great, thank you all so much for carving out some of your time to be with us. Now I'm gonna ask our students to share a little bit about who's in the room. So just show of hands, I asked you to 
make sure you can see yourself on the camera, which I think will be helpful. And if you are going to raise your hand, I want to know that you have an elbow. So make sure that your arm is up high so that our guests can also see you. So how many of you all are seniors? All right, two. Juniors, three. Sophomores, first year students. Okay, wonderful, a good plethora. How many of you all are communication majors? Okay, what about business, psychology? What other major did I miss? Bio, did you raise your hand? Art major, did I miss anyone else? Okay, totally fine. One of the things I love about working at Georgetown is a liberal arts institution. You can be lots of majors and they go on to do lots of different things, which we've heard about for many of our alums who participated in these panels. Um, we might hear some of that today. Um, how many of you all um, are here for a Nexus credit? No shame in that Nexus game, yes. All right, we got a couple of those. Nexus has had a lot of different terms, um, but that is our uh, co-cur, trying to think, CEP might ring a bell maybe for Ashley and Gina. Um, so, okay. So next question, um, as we have learned a little bit just about kind of your role, where you are now, now we wanna hear a little bit about your time at Georgetown. Um, we know that people, our alums always love to talk about their experiences at Georgetown. So share with us um, what has been the memory or takeaway from Georgetown that has impacted you the most. Um, so it could be anything professionally, personally, but what has been the greatest impact, um, a lesson that you learned at Georgetown that now impacts your day to day? Um, and so we'll start with Ashley on this one and then we'll start popcorning after this question. Absolutely. Um, well, Georgetown has a special place in my heart um, after going there and then working at Georgetown later on. But I think the, the greatest takeaway for me was the relationships. So, um, you know, getting to experience Georgetown and then going to a large public university was a whole different setting. Um, and, you know, both had their value for sure. But I think the biggest piece for me was the relationships with obviously the friends and, and those that you interact with, but also um, with the professors. I think being able to um, have such small class sizes and have professors that um, are so one-on-one. -on -one. I know that for me, right after I graduated Georgetown, actually one of my professors um, brought me on in an internship working for him at the Council of State Governments because of the relationship that we had formed. Um, and then a lot of the professors from Georgetown are still references for me, um, even on my resume now, this many years later. And so I think just the, the value of that, taking advantage of that being um, at a, such a special place with, with such small class sizes and being able to really build those relationships um, is a lot different than people that have experiences at a larger university sometimes. So I think that that's it. And then also just utilizing the services you have again, um, you know, we didn't have when we were there <laughs> nearly the depth and breadth of career services. Um, and so I know for me, I completed internships all throughout college and graduate school. I was working the entire time um, in all different fields. And so I think being able to do that and and networking with Georgetown alums. Um, when I was at Georgetown, I was director of alumni relations. And so through that, I got to learn too, how many of the alumni want to reconnect um, with students. And so I think that that just, that's really special. So definitely take advantage of that while you're there. I think you said Gina, so I'm just gonna start talking. <laughs> Sorry, I will say okay. is that better? Yep, um, you know, I. 10,000% agree with everything that Ashley said. I also worked at Georgetown right after um, college and now I actually live a block away. So if you guys ever see me walking around with a gray pit bull, it's me. Um, one of the takeaways, there's actually really two big things. One is just kind of a fearlessness of failing. My first like paper that I turned in for Dr. Brady, who was a professor in the English department at the time, uh, we had to do an outline first. I didn't really follow the instructions, so I got a D. Then I reworked it, did it right, and I got an F because my ideas were not great. So failing so soon out the gate kind of got that out of the way for me after having been a straight A student in college. Um, and it just sort of freed me up to try different things to make sure that I was following directions. Um, and that's been something that's been so critical for my career now. Uh, for what I do, and I'll speak about this more later, is I submit a lot of proposals to government agencies and it is nothing but paperwork and following directions. And it is a heck of a lot of failing. Like when I submit a proposal, there's 20 other firms who put one in. 
I've got a one in 20 chance at winning. So for everything I win, I lose probably four or five things. So getting comfortable with that, like realizing that my success is not necessarily whether or not my proposal is picked. It's the, the product that I put out and the relationships that I've built that are really important. Um, and kind of related to that is just, I don't feel very intimidated now because when I was a student, Dr. Allen, who's now the president, was a professor and we used to have to go into her office, which was in Giddings at the time, and read our papers out loud to her and nothing has been so scary as that in my professional career. So I think that if you're doing the things that are kind of scaring you now, uh, working with the professors, just kind of having that intimidation and wanting to do well, um, I think that you're just going to be set up so well for a professional career once you get out. Sierra, what about you? Uh, this question is actually really hard for me. Um, I couldn't really think of many lessons I learned at Georgetown that I was like really kept with me, but I reflect a lot on my Georgetown experience and reinterpret um, what I experienced there all the time. And I'm like, oh, that's what was going on there. I wish I would have picked up that lesson then. Um, so things like I chose Georgetown in part because of the small classroom size and knowing that I wanted to be known. Um, I should have known about myself then that I probably would have liked working in smaller organizations then moving forward. And I did not learn that. Um, and so I wasted, <laughs> well, I did not waste. I learned a lot while working at large organizations, but it didn't give me the results that I wanted um, until I moved to a smaller one. And I was like, oh yes, this is what, this is what that feels like. I really like this feeling. Um, so things like that. Um, I definitely remember it being really emphasized during my during everything uh, that you're coming from a liberal arts college and that that made you really broad. And at the time, I really liked that idea and I thought it would be great. Graduating in 2008 at the very beginning of the recession was tough. Um, a liberal arts degree prepares you for everything and nothing at the same time. Um, so getting your foot in the door is really a challenge, but I am so glad that I did have that breath. Um, and I am definitely more of a generalist now. It's what I enjoy. Um, I enjoy working in all different parts of the business and having a hand in everything. And um, I'm so glad that I had that more general approach and I still bring in like general uh, learnings, like things I learned from like random psychology things. I'm, I'm still always learning, still reading, but like psychology, athletics, um, music, and I bring all those analogies into my work life. Um, and I think that Georgetown being, being in liberal arts and, and having that plethora of subjects just really emphasized that and um, helped me even, develop that even further. Awesome. All right, Maya. Yeah, I echo everyone. Um, but the biggest uh, takeaway I got from Georgetown is don't underestimate um, the power of the relationships that you will make. You may have your sorority sister, your fraternity brother, the individual who may be sitting next to you in art class. Those people <laughs> with us being a, such a small school will remember you and they will remember um, any type of interaction you had. And so leverage um, your relationships. Um, I would not be at Georgetown and I guess that is the, I'm sorry, I would not be at I wouldn't be at Georgetown without relationships because I'm originally from Atlanta, but I also wouldn't be here in my role um, if it wasn't for the relationships that I built at Georgetown. I was super involved in a lot of things. Um, so when you think about you know, the 4.0 GPA you may have, um, coming from recruiting experience, I don't look at what degree you have. I don't look at your 4.0. I look at what impact did you have? When I'm asking you interview questions, it's what was your impact, right? And so um, think about a beyond. And for those of you who are seniors, continue to think beyond like, how can I take this um, relationship that I've built? I have these great, amazing grades, but then also like, how can I be impactful? How can I leverage my strengths to help somebody else? Whether it's something within your class, a project, or even if it's on a personal level. Um, because these relationships that you create now, and people used to tell me all the time, your, your friends you made in college will be your best friends for life. 
most likely they will, <laughs> especially if you came from Georgetown, because it's such a small school and you get to know each other on such an intimate level um, compared to going to like a UK or a University of Georgia. So be intentional with um, the relationships you have and then also be intentional on looking outside of just your um, schoolwork. What impact are you having? Get involved, get to know people. It, everyone needs help. I, I worked in student life. I was like, hi, Miss Charlene, do you need someone to help you? Like, I just want exposure and I just want to um, get my name out. And um, with that being said, when it came to me needing a, a, a letter of recommendation, I could pull from so many different areas because of the relationships that I had. So leverage those. These people will be with you for the rest of your life. If you plan to stay in Kentucky, just know that Kentucky is small. The Georgetown alumni is smaller, but we're mighty. And we're out here in powerful positions, as you can see. Um, so... <laughs> Um, don't hesitate to, to really hone in on those relationships right now as you can. Wonderful, wonderful. And you got a, a little uh, <clears throat> support from our director of alumni relations who's joined us. So yes, um, I am. Olivia, we're <laughs> glad that you could join us. We're grateful to partner with um, our alumni office as we kind of asked you all to join us and our other guests who have been with us um, this semester. Before we move on to the next question, I just want to see if any of our students in the room have anything that you want to ask or follow up on uh, with our guests today. Okay, um, so Myra, I'm actually going to start with you. Um, and so this next question is really just to share a little bit more about your personal and professional journey. You shared some of that in your introduction, um, but tell us just a little bit kind of whatever you uh, would like to share about kind of where you are now and maybe you can reference some of those first jobs that you got after you graduated. I think often that is um, maybe a source of, you know, concern or anxiety, like, you know, how does that process work? And then where, you know, several of you mentioned kind of having different roles that have gotten you to where you are today. We'd love just to hear about whatever you'd like to share as far as that goes. So Maya, let's uh, let you kick it off for us. Yes, of course. So, um, my, my first internship actually uh, was because there was a career fair at Georgetown. I was walking to the CAF. There were people out at tables. I saw big ass fans. It, it attracted me because there was a fanny and I'm like, what's going on? What, why is there a donkey? And why is there cursing at Georgetown, right? Um, so <laughs> I um, actually gained an internship just from building a relationship with um, the recruiter that was there at the time. And I started working for big ass fans after that. Um, I would say I, I love that job. Um, it allowed me to I actually move back home um, and I did some outside sales, um, but I also realized that um, I only knew sales. Um, I had a, a, a degree that was pretty broad business management and I could go so many other places. So I was like, why not get my MBA? <laughs> um, so I went and got my MBA um, with the emphasis in HR because I remember there was one HR class that I took. Um, it was like a random like adjunct professor and I loved it. And I was like, oh, I wanna learn more. I love people. I love working with people. Um, so I got my MBA with the emphasis in HR. Um, when I tell you relationships it, are important, um, I was in, a, in my car headed to a manufacturing facility to sell them a fan. And I was like, it's hot, I'm in Georgia. I love what I'm doing, but I also hate the environment that I'm working in. Like I prefer doing this over the phone and air conditioning and not actually um, in these dirty <laughs> hot environments. I'm selling a fan, so clearly they need some air. Um, so I actually got received a phone call randomly, divine intervention um, from Devon Pitts. He Georgetown College alumni, we were in gospel choir together, very close. Um, we, he gave me a call and was like, Lily is expanding. Um, I, would, I would think you would be interested. I would vouch for you for a pharmaceutical sales position um, with Lily. And I said, okay, sign me up. Like, I love it. I get a car, I get to grow in my career. Um, I'm in a bigger company in which like, if I didn't want to be a sales rep anymore and I wanted to go into HR or marketing, I could do that because I could see the ability to um, grow my career. Well, the reason why Devon got into Lilly was because a DSM or a district sales manager for Lilly at the time in Louisville 
actually attended the church on campus or the church outside of campus, but Georgetown Baptist and Devon played the drums, relationships. Devon got on with Lily. Devon brought five alumni with him, relationships. So <laughs> after I got on to Lily, I then uh, got on with Lily. I then decided like, man, I want to use my HR degree or my emphasis in HR with my master's. And so I went into I performed as a sales representative and said I wanted to do more and I went into HR and I did recruiting. Um, and from that time, I was able to reach back and bring two more <laughs> Lily, um, Georgetown alumni to Lily. So relationships, as I keep saying, is the common theme for me in my career. Um, and so from that point on, I just continued to grow within Lily. Um, and I think one of the questions you had in, um, the email, you may not have said it, I could, I could hardly hear, I'm sorry, but um, what was one thing I would tell my college eight self or something that I wish I would have known back then? Um, you don't have to know everything and you don't have to have your life planned out, right? When I graduated, um, I had a job, thank God, and I wasn't looking, but I was helping my friends find roles. And when they're applying to a position, they're like, what do I want to do? Like, I'm a communications major. Do I want to go into broadcasting? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? And there's so many different levels, right, to how um, to differentiate yourself to make yourself competitive. Did you do an internship? Do you have a project? Do you have a portfolio? Don't let that um, cause angst, anxiety, cause you to feel like you're not where you need to be. Everyone has a different path and a different timing and a time frame for you to get to where you need to be. Um, you will find that if you continue to like put yourself in positions to get to the next level, but you're not happy, you're just driving your career, but work-life balance is key. If you do not love what you're doing, it will drain you. So just be really intentional. Don't try to force getting a, a, a you know a job just because you you know want a title or um, you're wanting to you know just show your impact and show your success. Like take the time to figure out like what do I really enjoy? What do I enjoy about my major? Um, and what are certain positions that I would really enjoy doing that can lead me to the next step? Um, but. I, I was that person and I'm a very like high performing, high achiever mindset. And I wanted to get out and I wanted to do all of these great things. I loved my inside sales job at Big Ass Fans. I hated my outside sales job, but that was a career progression, right? And I was like, I want to do it. I need to do it, but I hated it. And there's roles that I've done at Lily that like individuals have been like, you would be really great, like do this. And I do, and I'm like, I absolutely hate it. I hate my life. This is two years now that I'm upset um, every time I come to work. I love the people, but I don't love the line of work. So just start to figure out what it is that you really have a passion for. We have our majors and you can tie your major into your passion, right? I love business. I love profit. I love making money, but I also love people. And I love getting people to where they need to be and helping people develop in their personal and their professional lives. So business management management in my current role aligns perfectly with my passions. So know your passions, know your strengths and see how that can tie into your next position or your you know, whatever your next internship or when you're graduating the role that you want and start planning earlier. If you wait until May, everyone else, just from rule of thumb, everyone else is looking for an entry-level position in May. <laughs> Start before May. So if you're graduating this year, get on Indeed right now. Get on LinkedIn. Um, find Georgetown alumni. Start building your relationships now um, and sharing your interests now because once the position is open, most likely they already have a candidate that they want. They're just posting it for legal reasons. So tidbits from a recruiter. Yes. That's Thank awesome. you so much. <laughs> Wonderful advice. Um, and so it's always great to hear from our alumni who have worked in different sorts of recruiting areas because um, it's, it's always really important. Thank you for sharing that. Um, in my own progression professionally, I've worked, um, as I mentioned, at the University of Kentucky as an academic advisor in the College of Business and the College of Communication. So this is like the field of which people that I used to work with are, are going into. And you're so right, Maya, that you can be um, have a functional area where your expertise is at and intersect that with any industry. If it's education, healthcare, science, 
entertainment, sports. So, so it's so wonderful to find those really great opportunities for those overlaps. So thank you for sharing that. Sierra, let's hear a little bit more about your journey. Sure. Um, so I, let's see, when I graduate, graduated Georgetown, I knew that I wanted to be a general manager. Um, I love business. I love like thinking about the big picture. The challenge with being an undergraduate is you are not ready for a general manager position. So you have to start in some kind of function. And I wasn't sure what kind of function I wanted to start in. So I just kind of applied for like anything. Um, some advice that I had gotten at the time, which is good advice, is pick a company that you like um, and take any position in it that you can get starting out because it will give you experience. And once you're in, you can network into a position that you like more. Um, so that's what I did. I picked a company that was a German company since I speak German. That was kind of my leg in, even though they did not need my German at all. Like one time I used it and everyone was shocked, um, cause they didn't expect so you used it. it, right? You met your goal. You used it. Well, I did, but see, I was calling like, okay, I was on the escalations desk and I had to call technicians and be like, Hey, you need to like work on this thing. The, the user just called in again and they really want it. So I was calling from the U S and they were so confused as to where their ticket was in the queue because they expected an American to speak English and they wouldn't be looking into the American ticket queue with someone who spoke German. So, you know, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, so it was the only time I used it. From there, I will say I did hate my job. <laughs> I was just, it was too easy for me. I wasn't challenged. I wasn't learning enough. And so what it taught, what it taught, like challenged me to do then was two things. One, I always knew I wanted to go get my MBA, but I had been planning on getting it as a, uh, like at the same time that I was working and just get doing a part-time MBA in the Cincinnati region, which is where I am originally from. And when I hated my job so much, <laughs> I started really working hard to get into good MBA programs. Um, at the same time, I also trained and ran a marathon and then I used that for my essay, it worked fantastically. Actually learned a ton from doing a marathon and GMAT study at the same time, you'd be surprised. Um, but I did both of those things. And because I had so much time on my hands, I was able to do it really, really well. And then I used actually Georgetown Connections. I found out about IE Business School in Madrid, Spain. Um, and so I applied there. It was my top choice. I got in. And so I went abroad for my MBA. It was a fantastic experience. Um, and I did it full time. So I didn't just do it part time. Obviously, I was not working in Spain. I didn't have the credentials. Um, I also didn't speak Spanish. So I moved there without speaking Spanish. It was a fantastic experience. Absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the challenges of that was I had not yet fully specialized in a function. And then coming out, I was like, okay, I want to do either marketing or operations. I did not have networks in either one of those. And I was coming back to the U.S. from a school that is not well known in the U.S. It's known pretty well in the Spanish speaking world. It was ranked in the top 10 global MBA, like global of MBA programs. Um, so up there with Harvard and um, London Business School, et cetera, but not well known in the U.S. That made it really challenging to come back and get started in my career. So I spent three years working internships and contract positions, looking for my full-time job. I finally ended up at Scott's Miracle Grow where I was an assistant brand manager. I was there for about a year and um, came across, ended up having a toxic boss um, and felt like God was telling me to quit my job without having anything lined up. That was um, quite the experience, um, quite the trust exercise for me. Um, but within three weeks of resigning, I had a new job. Um, so I moved to Chicago where I worked for Tyson Foods, worked on the Jimmy Dean brand um, for two years, and then the Hillshire Farms brand for two years. I was, so I was there for about four years um, as an associate and senior associate brand manager. I loved my work. Um, especially when I was working on the base business and really managing like the day to day and the marketing and everything that had to do with it, like the PL and all of that. That was so much fun. Um, but lessons of a large company, it is hard to rise. 
it attracts everybody. And so even if you are really awesome, you have to be even more awesome um, to rise and to stand out. Uh, so I left and went to SIG, which is, it's a germ, it's actually a German, Swiss German com company, um, used to have make six hours, which might be how you would hear it, but it's uh, now a packaging company. So they make those cartons that you would find like chicken broth in really, they're really, really big abroad for liquid dairy. Um, so I went there as a category manager. I was there for a year and really enjoyed it. And the biggest thing I enjoyed about it was that it was a small company. I really stood out. <laughs> I stood out as fantastic talent. Um, and it was really nice. Um, I got to do a whole bunch of different things. And then at about the year mark, we got new management that was starting to take my um, team into a new direction. I wasn't really enjoying the work. And meanwhile, my dad was growing his consulting business or his consulting business was growing. It was too big for him. And so he asked me if I would want to come on. My dad consulted in lean process improvement, lean operations. He's all he's been doing that since, you know, I was in high school or before, um, actually long before that. He's been doing that basically since I was born. Um, and I always knew that I really liked the work that he was doing. I had I had shadowed him while I was at Georgetown, actually, and really loved it. Um, and really thought about going into it. The challenge for me was that everybody who would look at, who wanted, anybody who had a position that was for that always wanted an engineering degree. And I was not about to go back to school for an engineering degree after having already done my bachelor's and my MBA. So I joined my dad last August. Um, I've been working primarily with one client and I actually have my own contract with them now too as they've been needing help to become more scalable. And it's been awesome. I've been able to use like all of the lessons that I have learned throughout my jobs. Um, I've been, I've been able to coach them. Um, and actually that is when you talk about like advice to my younger self, two things. One, I totally echo everything Maya said. I should, I was someone who was like, I really want to get to like this North, like this big job over here that I dreamed about. And it kind of, it kind of put me into tunnel vision where I wasn't considering other things. I wish, and what I've learned since is that the best jobs I've ever taken are the ones that just sound fun to me. Um, those are the ones that are like, you know what? I don't really know where this is going to go, but I'm going to learn something new. And maybe it is like a small step above my current title. It's, and it, those are awesome learning opportunities. Um, so advice to my younger self, don't be so concerned with where you want to be ultimately. If you really want to be there, you will get there, even if it is in a roundabout manner. And I will tell you, everyone I talk to, to who has those more like curvy roads up through their career, they're so much more interesting. Those are the things that you look back and you're like, oh my goodness, I've actually done all these things. This is really cool. Um, and you learn so much from it. The second thing is um, if you do want to rise to high leadership opportunities in, in the business world, people who are at those levels get coaching. I did not know that was a thing until I got a coach. And I started learning so much about all these things that I didn't have the right mindset for that. I didn't know that I had to be proactive on certain things and didn't know how to do it. And had I had a coach early on, I would have been able to just breeze through those much quicker. Um, so don't be afraid to get a coach. <laughs> um, it really helps a lot. Uh, they're there to just kind of help you see what's outside of your world. They can be someone that you can ask for help that isn't in your company. So you don't feel like you're looking stupid. And they believe in you. You're kind of paying them to believe in you, but they really do. <laughs> um, so I would definitely recommend that. Um, and then the other thing is everyone's been talking about relationships. That is what I did not do well in Georgetown. Um, I didn't really have, I, like six months after my graduation, I went into a small depression thinking that I made no lasting friends at Georgetown. That ended up not being the case. One of my roommates did kind of claw her way back in, um, which was great. But I wish that I would have invested more in my friendships and also more in my network, which includes where your parents work. 
I was very afraid of using my dad as a connection because I thought that it was nepotism and that I needed to earn the position on my own. That is not true. Everybody finds a job through networking and your parents are part of your network. If they are willing to make introductions or help you get into position, that's okay. You still earned that position because if the person didn't want you to get, didn't want to give you the job, they wouldn't. Um, they can always say no. So just a few things that I have learned <laughs> since then that I wish I knew when I was in college. Um, but yeah, sum it all up. I've had a very roundabout career. I have worked in a lot of different areas. I have, I love that general aspect of it. And it didn't necessarily serve me to feel like I knew where I wanted to be 20, 10, 20 years down the road. You really only need to know what do you think would be fun now that you might want to explore? And as you do that, you will start getting a, a clearer picture of what you want long-term and where you might wanna go. But the clearer that you are about your very next step, the more people can help you. Um, that was one of my other challenges early on as I was like kind of open to, I was open to everything and nothing at the same time and people didn't know how to help. Um, so that's kind of a lot. But that was Great insight. Thank you for sharing. I think um, almost every session we've had, Stephanie and Olivia can correct me, but I, I'm pretty certain we have hit on this topic of whether it is making a decision, if it is that career trajectory, it is not a straight line. It is the mess of curves and twists and turns. So just remember that as you are maybe thinking, am I in the right major? It, or am I going to find the opportunities that I think I want? Do I even know what I want? Um, and also just to echo one of the things that I've really been learning over the past several years is all we have to do is make the next right step. I'm a very futuristic person. Some of you in the room may be also, um, and that's great. And there's certainly space for that. But just think about what is the decision I have to make next? Is your next decision the career you're going to be in for the rest of your life? No, it's maybe... What, what are you going to do this summer? Or who are you going to connect with um, to build that network, you know, um, this summer? So great insight. Um, all right, Gina. Well, um, as I was thinking about this and kind of listening to everybody else, I'm just kind of blown away by how we are all in different fields, but we all have very similar kind of things that are overlapping in our journeys and in our expertise too, because I was trying not to nerd out when Sierra was talking about lean. I was a big fan of big ass fans. I had actually thought about higher ed at some point. Um, but my part of my career actually started before I got into college. When I was in high school, I worked in printing. Uh, my dad worked in printing, got, got me a job with one of his friends. And I went from just sort of answering phones and filing to actually learning graphic design, how things go from a computer in those days to film and then to print, now it doesn't work that way. Um, but it was a very kind of manual process. I was, you know, hands-on with machines. Some days I was working on a computer. Other days I was putting holes in clothing tags. And then later when I worked at the college bookstore, I saw those clothing tags on some of our merch. And I was like, I put that hole in that tag. Um, so I, I already had kind of this background coming into Georgetown. So when I got to school, I already like knew how to use Adobe and, or PageMaker in those days and Quirk and had this sort of design background. So, you know, I spent my time at Georgetown really focusing on the writing aspect. Um, but because I had that graphic design element, when I got to journalism, uh, which Dr. Allen was teaching at the time because Dr. Allen was the English department, not the president provost yet. Um, we realized that I had that talent and I got an internship with the Underground Railroad Research Institute, which was at Georgetown College at the time. It's no longer there. It used to be the office where that Montessori is on College Street. Um, but I, I did their newsletters. I did basically all the publications. I helped my boss, who was um, Dr. Alistine Adams, do uh, PowerPoint slides, that kind of thing. So I was I started that my senior year and I stayed in that role after I graduated for a couple of years and our grant running money ran out and or was about to run out. So I knew I needed to find something else. So I applied for everything, I think. And I, I felt probably more like a new graduate two years out than I did as a new graduate because I had graduated with with a job. And there was one job that I applied for that I was certain that I wouldn't get. And that was a marketing coordinator position for an engineering firm, which is called Intran at the time. And lo and behold, that is the job <laughs> that I got. Um, and I stayed there until 2018. 
Um, at some point in the middle of all of that, I was just sort of um, kind of maxed out where I could go with Intran. Intran was about a couple hundred people. So it was a smaller firm, but I was pretty busy. I worked with five or six different offices, not just here in Kentucky, um, but also Chicago, Nashville, um, and, and places like that. So I, I did go back to school briefly for what was going to be a publishing degree because my other passion with the printing has always been books. I had also done the Georgetown Review um, literary magazine when I was at Georgetown, which is no longer around. But um, I did two classes there. One was instructional design, which is something I'd still use every day because I have to tell people how to print the things that I'm doing or do certain things for me. Um, but I was just not, I'm just not a school person, as it turns out. Like I did enough school, I did a couple classes and I was like, I don't have an ME anymore. Um, so I, I really came back and focused on my career. And at that point, Intran was purchased by Stantec, which is now the largest um, engineering firm in Kentucky. So in that role, you know, this is not a field that I was even aware of. And that's one thing that, you know, I really hope that people look at the field because it's a, it's, engineering. So it is the definition of STEM and being a liberal arts person in that environment is so helpful to me. And it's so helpful for the companies that I work for, because I'm working with people um, to put together proposals typically um, that are potentially very technical, but they need to be written in such a way that a non-technical audience can understand them. And so that's where I kind of come in with graphics and how do you say things? How do we even organize the document if we have that kind of open-endedness? Um, to really tell the stories that we need to. And that's that's part of it is just kind of recognizing, okay, this road or bridge that we drive over every day has a story behind it. How do we tell that story? So that's uh, kind of what I'm back to doing. I did take a little detour, went back into printing for a few years, but then COVID hit. I got very unceremoniously fired uh, via a letter overnight from a giant company that certainly had the human resources staff to call people. So I think like Sierra, I'm burned out a little bit on the larger companies and like the smaller to mid-sized ones because you do have those personal connections and stuff. Um, but because of the good work that I had done at Stantec, leading uh, proposals and different marketing design things, my next job here at Pond & Company is because I worked with somebody and kind of not going to say I forgot about that person. I just didn't realize what an impact that I had had shown and how I was able to do work. So he just kind of popped up out of the blue and he was like, we're drowning. Our clients are coming out with these proposals. It's a competitive thing. Can you come on and, um, and join our team? So I actually joined Pond first as a freelancer, putting together proposals, bids that go into um, different government clients and then turn that into a full-time position. So I've been here for coming up on two years now, I think. So it's a, it's an interesting field. I think that if I could talk to my younger self, I would realize that I was more right about some things than I realized. I was sort of a pain in college, pretty pretty outspoken and stuck to my guns. And that was something I think I got away with in my 20s that I was like, okay, I need to like actually behave and act like a normal person. And that was not, not working for me. And so now I kind of find myself gut checking and saying, okay, what would 23 year old me say or do in this situation and how can i say or do those things without cussing or being unprofessional um but you know part of what has made me successful is just sort of you know being honest and saying okay i don't think this is a good idea i think this is you know we could do this better so uh for me winding up in in an engineering field is really just interesting because i'm working with people who don't think the way that i do but i can understand more about how they think and i can teach them how i think more and ultimately we just sort of get, get out there and and literally build bridges sometimes. Awesome. Thanks so much, Gina, for sharing. I am also kind of nerding out on this conversation because it's so exciting to see um, the things that you all are doing. Um, I remember that 20 something Gina put off as a uh, professional in residence life. And um, I'm glad that some of that gumption has returned. Um, to, uh, to what can be challenging to navigate kind of your own identity and um, you know who you are as a person, but how do you put this professionalism to that and, and communicate in ways that are, are fit for that setting. So thanks for sharing that, that was great. All right, Ashley, I'm gonna let you kind of bring us home. And then I know um, Olivia has a question she always likes to ask our guests. So we'll have one more question from Olivia after we hear from Ashley. Super. 
Um, so I mentioned earlier, I did internships all throughout college. Um, and that to me is something um, that I would emphasize too to my college age self is how important it is to figure out what you do like, but then also what you don't like. Um, so I know, you know, for me, some of those were just as valuable on the other side of it, of figuring out this is not something I want to do um, with my life. So, so don't get discouraged by that. Um, but for me, I knew I didn't want to go straight into graduate school um, right out of Georgetown just so that I would do it um, and go ahead. So that was the path I went as I went on to get my master's in public administration, but worked um, all throughout graduate school and stayed involved there too. Um, so you know, I really thought I wanted to go the government route. And um, so went that route and, and throughout graduate school did internships with the Council of State Governments and the Kentucky League of Cities and Kentucky Association of Counties and kind of all those governmental um, entities, all very valuable. Um, but, you know, ultimately, I'm going to switch past um, more towards higher ed after that, but um, did that. And then after that started um, actually working in, um, got, a, got a job out of grad school at for my thesis that I presented, um, one of the practitioners on the panel actually offered me a job at United Way doing fundraising. So that was kind of my first um, stint in fundraising. Wasn't something I'd ever thought about doing, um, but she you know, came up to me after and said, I've got a job for you. And I was just excited to get a full-time job. And um, you know, actually a very valuable experience for me because I actually had to go in you know, at 24, 25 years old and um, present to bank presidents and hospital CEOs. And, um, you know, so that really helped me to build a lot of confidence, I think, is going in and, and asking for money is never comfortable. Um, but having to go in and, and be in front of those leaders um, was great for me. So got that experience. Um, and then really, you know, didn't, again, didn't, didn't know I had an interest in higher education. Um, worked at the area development district, got some experience um, doing grant writing and community development and working with all the county judges and mayors and things in the area. Again, great um, confidence builder for me getting to work with these officials who were, and, and coworkers who were a lot older than me um, actually, but got an opportunity, um, Georgetown. So actually somebody that was working there at the time had called me and said, you know, we're creating this position in marketing for the graduate education division. Would you be interested? And I knew how much I loved Georgetown and I thought about higher education. Um, and I thought, well, this would be a really great opportunity to go back and do it in a place I know and love. And so I took that job. Um, and once I got into it, I just decided there were some things I saw that really needed to happen. Uh, a lot of it was career development for our graduate students. And, and I went in and talked to the students and talked to the um, you know, to the professors and found out that there really wasn't a whole lot of career development at the time. So they were getting this great degree, but they didn't, um, they weren't able to get jobs afterwards. They didn't know how to go about that. So created some different career development functions within graduate education. Um, and our president at the time was Dr. Crouch. And so he called me in and he said, hey, I've seen what you've done with grad ed. Would you be interested in being director of alumni relations? So I thought I was taking a new job. And he said, no, 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 you still have that job. You got both jobs. Um, so I had two business cards. Um, so so got to do two different roles while I was there, um, but said yes to it because I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to, again, kind of learn another area um, and get to meet a lot of alumni. And I loved it. I got to run, you know, homecoming and all the different alumni events. Um, and uh, so it was fun. It was a lot of fun, but it was just, it was funny. I joke now that, you know, I, I literally had to kind of remember which one I was doing at the time and, and switch back and forth. But um, that was my first stint in higher education. And I love atmosphere of working with college students. I think um, it's just energetic. You know, I, I feel like to me, a lot of times later on, um, you work with people that are maybe more jaded or just kind of set in their ways about the, the way they do things. Whereas college student, it's the world is your oyster truly. So there's so much, um, so much opportunity and energy there. And so I got the job at UK after that, um, which was a step up from that. And again, really enjoyed that. I got to work with different employers all around the region. Um, so, you know, love, love higher education, love that environment, love all the opportunity there is while you're there. Um, and then I had never worked in private sector. And so I was really curious. And so I got um, an opportunity to be a director of marketing for a startup company. And, um, you know, for me, I had the two majors. I think if I had done another major, it would have been business. Um, if I could have triple majored um, or stayed longer, but my parents let me know I was on the four-year plan, so I only got to do the two. But um, that was my opportunity to get some experience in business. And so really enjoyed getting to do that, um, getting to travel around the country, and, and again, just kind of seeing how a startup worked and work with an entrepreneur. Um, so got that experience. And then for me too, you know, I, I've realized, um, I was like, I've lived in Kentucky my whole life. Like I really want to experience somewhere else. Um, not for everybody, but I needed to do that. And so I actually got a job at the University of South Carolina. So again, staying in higher education, but um, getting to experience a different place. And uh, 
very valuable for me. I think sometimes if you live other places, you appreciate things about home even more. And then you also get to, you know, push yourself outside the comfort zones. I know several of you all have mentioned that, um, but just kind of getting outside of that. So that was really good for me. Got that experience. Um, and then before I moved back, worked in Florida, um, actually in Pensacola for a consulting company um, based out of Chicago that did consulting with different um, higher education institutions, healthcare, and, um, and also K-12. So that experience, again, in private sector, um, totally different experience. But to me, I think everything that you do and everywhere that you work, I've always said it's kind of tools in your tool belt. So um, different things that you learn along the way that really do help you. And, and again, just push you outside of your comfort zone and you figure out what you like and what you don't like. And that's all equally as valuable. Um, and then the role that I'm in now, actually, when I was moving back um, right in the middle, right, right beginning of COVID, and, uh, and again, another relationship, I had um, a friend who worked as an occupational therapist, and she said, you know, I know that you've worked in fundraising, we're really, we've been looking for somebody for a bit, um, very mission driven, um, and so took the role that I've been in, I've been there a couple years now, and so now getting to really do, um, that's something I've learned with nonprofits, I think, as well, is, you know, you get to wear a lot of different hats, so everything from the grant writing and grant administration to all of the events, um, to all of the marketing and PR, and, uh, and the fundraising. So getting to do all those for me, I like that. Um, I don't think I would do well being siloed into one specific role. And so, um, you know, and again, it's a lot of being out in the community and, and relationship building, but, um, but I've had to figure out too, I think something else I would tell myself looking back is take advantage of, you know, assessments, learning about yourself. So I know that for me, um, I didn't know a lot of those tools existed then. I know that they are, you know, available now for you also. I think looking at that and just figuring out, you know, what is it that are your strengths and what are some of your maybe blind spots um, and where's that sweet spot going to be for you? You know, I know for me that um, I'm very mission driven. So I have to be in an organization that I really believe in and I know that I'm making a difference and I can see that. Um, but I think that everybody's different. So I think taking advantage of that and then also having confidence. Um, I think that when I was in college, I didn't realize I thought that maybe I was wasting somebody's time or I didn't have much to offer um, and didn't reach out to people in certain fields because I thought, well, what do I have to offer to them? They don't have the time to talk to me. Um, but I think having that confidence to do that, you know, whether it's through LinkedIn, I'm sure everybody on here and, and the other alumni that you've had present would be more than happy to connect on there. But I think, um, you know, just doing informational interviews. So that's what I started doing is just uh, setting up times to do calls with people that were in fields that I thought I might be interested in and just said, hey, can I have 15 or 20 minutes of your time just to talk about what you do and find out the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and, you know, 99 times out of 100, they were more than happy to do that. So I think having the confidence to know that you, even in college, have a lot to offer um, and, and to take in the time to just really, you know, I took notes on what they told me. And a lot of that swayed whether I did something or not was just talking to people that were doing it and learning more about it. that was really helpful information um, as well. So we appreciate you all sharing your stories. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Olivia um, who's joining us. And yeah, I know it's a little odd to figure out which direction you need to walk. <laughs> well, hi ladies, it's so good to see you all. Uh, Maya, Gina, Ashley and Sierra, thank you all so much for, for being with us today. I always say to our alum, thank you for giving your time, talent and treasure back to Georgetown. A lot of times we think about treasure, um, we think about money, and, and, and we need that too at Georgetown College, but, but what you're giving today, I mean, this is your treasure, and so thank you for sharing your experiences. I myself went back down memory lane, my hearing you talk about um, the Vaughn Pitts, and, and Maya was actually my resident director when I was a student here. Um, Gina, hearing you talk about Dr. Turley and, and you know, doing things in the bookstore, uh, love her, Dr. Turley is also a Georgetown alum. Uh, Ashley, hearing you talk about how you were the director of alumni relations, you and I need to talk, sis. Um, we need to have some conversation. Uh, we'd we'll love to chat with you about some of the things that you did. And then, Sierra, um, I, I know our paths didn't cross, but I know much. I know so much about the lean process, and I am a big fan of it. So we need people like you, and so I definitely want to connect with you about that in the future. But I just thank you all so much for giving your time and sharing uh, your experiences with our students and with, with us as well. I do like to ask our alum. Uh, this one question when either they come to campus or they're speaking virtually, and I, I like to ask, what is your favorite Georgetown College story? Now, we are pressed for time, I, I must say. I don't want Faith and Stephanie to get mad at me. So if you can share that within like 
30 seconds to a minute or less, that would be great. But I want to hear what your favorite Georgetown story is. It can be appropriate or inappropriate. It's just whatever you feel <laughs> most comfortable to share. So I think our students appreciate that, you know. Um, so I don't know who wants to go first, but if you can share your favorite Georgetown uh, memory or story in 30 seconds or less, uh, I definitely appreciate it. I'll go. <laughs> um, this is, uh, the, I'm gonna tie it back into my theme of relationships. So my favorite thing about Georgetown, and this is probably not um, career appropriate, but was reading day parties. It was my favorite time <laughs> to get to spend with just everyone because it was every sorority, fraternity, every athlete, everyone was there. And um, I just got to know different people. And it's weird because it's a party, but I mean, that's the best time to build friends, right? It's when you're at a party. Um, and from that and building those relationships, um, I actually won homecoming queen because I was able to just spend time with a whole bunch of people because um, I was always at reading day parties or whatever parties, like even in the beginning of the year when it was like, oh, for freshmen, toga party. Like I'm there. I don't care. I'm, I'm no people. Georgetown is too small and um, too, in my mind, being from Atlanta, too country for me not to be able to come out and build relationships with all kinds of people and just have fun with everyone there. It was it. I had to make it what I wanted it to be. And then from there, you get to know about UK things that are happening. You just keep building your network <laughs> from having fun. So while you're out having fun, if y'all still do reading day parties or the midnight breakfast or whatever it is, use those to your advantage. That's where everyone's at. And you can get exposure that way. Like I, that was my favorite. So I learned a lot from other people. I learned about sororities. I learned about what the athletes were doing just from these parties or these little small things that probably are like lame in our heads if we're seniors, but I took advantage of it every year. <laughs> Definitely good times. I, I said yes. <laughs> good clean fun. Good clean fun. <laughs> I think my favorite memory is actually graduation and not because I was leaving Georgetown, but because there was so much um, history and ceremony to it. I felt like I was really a part of something bigger and this huge legacy of Georgetown. Um, I also thought that the first name ceremony, like I continue to talk to friends and family about the first name ceremony and how how great of a gesture that is and how symbolic it is of entering into the world. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the first name ceremony um, is like the day before graduation and a whole bunch of professors line up and they introduce themselves with their first names. So instead of like Dr. Haddad, it actually, I don't know Dr. Haddad. I think it's Zahi is his first name, but like Dr. LaRue is, doc, is Pete. Of course, we always called him Dr. Pete. Um, Dr. Hadaway is Brad. Like they introduce them with their, themselves with their first names. And it's like this great equalizer um, and just really, really cool. Um, so all the tradition around that is a fantastic memory for me. Um, I think it made me more loyal to Georgetown than probably anything else um, is that history and legacy. I love it. Thank you, Sierra. Um, I went to Ireland, um, and it was one of those things I thought Oxford was the only path to studying abroad, but a uh, girlfriend and I, we just sort of hustled up some scholarships one summer, uh, practically stood outside with like a coffee can and just sort of drummed up the money and did uh, two weeks. Uh, we were three weeks over in Ireland. There was two weeks where there was school. I came back and did an independent study. Um, so for me, it was a really good way to get to fly for the first time, go overseas, um and, and do something that was academically important but have a heck of a lot of fun in the in the meantime um one of the groups that gave us money was the association of university women so it was women who were um, a little bit older than me some of them you know kind of grandmotherly age asking me about boys that i met when i was in ireland so that that whole like situation was hilarious in and of itself just to hit, have these ladies say okay stop telling me about the academia tell me about the fun y'all had Yeah, I think kind of going off of what Maya said, you know, I think about some of the, it really was good, clean, fun. Like I told my friends I went to bigger universities and they just kind of laugh. But, you know, some of the things that with my Georgetown friends, we talk about, you know, things like going to Grub Fest and Watermelon Bus and the little beginning of the year thing. I mean, just all those things, like I said, friends at other universities are like, what in the world? Um, and then, you know, even back in Gina, you'll remember this, there was a thing called the Tiger Tracker 
at the time that had everybody's picture and where they lived and their phone number. Everybody the tiger stalker. We call it the tiger stalker. Yeah, but I think, you know, we joke about that now, but we would literally prank call people for hours at night using the tiger tracker, um, you know, which is super silly. But, but I mean, it was like those memories of just um, staying up all night with, um, you know, the other girls that were in the dorm or on the floor and just having fun and just doing things like that that were so silly that we literally now you know, get together and talk about um, this long, you know, later about just some of those fun memories we made at Georgetown. So, so yeah, just embrace it all, have fun, um, like everybody else has mentioned, and, you know, just get to meet people because you really will meet some, um, some pretty amazing people while you're there. I love it. Thank you so much. And I, I can't thank you again, ladies. And I, I do want to say, I haven't shared this with anybody yet. Uh, so if I get in trouble by my VP, I will take it. But homecoming is the first weekend in October. It'll start Thursday, September 28th and go to October 2nd. Would love to have you all join us for that celebration. Uh, please keep that wrap tight. I'm not supposed to share that information, but uh, I feel like you all are elite enough to where I can share it with you. But thank you all for your time and for sharing your stories in October. Great. Thank you. Um, so students, I do have the Nexus code. Thank you all again for being with us. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, so that Nexus code is 361-777. Again, that is 361-777. I am going to stop our live stream. Thank you all for joining us online.